Astro has been getting more hype recently than any other framework. And after spending some quality developer time with it, I can say that it absolutely deserves the hype. It's a meta framework that lets you use components from just about any other framework, including React, Vue, or Svelte. You can even mix and match components from different frameworks. It also has the best implementation of partial hydration, which loads the JavaScript for components only when you need them. But don't take my word for it. Let's build something with it so you can see why when I rebuild my blog later this year, it's what I'll be using. Let's take a look at what it takes to install Astro. I'll go ahead and make sure that I'm on the desktop. Then in here, I'm going to make a directory. I'll call it demo Astro. And then I want to switch over to that directory. And then I'm going to do an npm init command Astro. It's probably going to ask you to install a package. Just say yes. And then it's going to take you through this CLI, which is going to give you the opportunity of choosing a template. Here, you can choose any one of these. I'm going to go with the minimal. I like to start things off with as little extra code as possible. Let's go ahead and do the npm install in here. I'm going to go ahead and run the git commands as well. And for the rest of this, I'm going to open this up in Visual Studio Code. Let's go over some of these files that got installed. Some of these are to set up something like TypeScript if you want to, as well as NPM. But there's also these stack blitz as well as the sandbox config files that are there for these two online code playgrounds that you're not going to really need. So let's go ahead and delete those. So let's pull up the terminal and I'm going to run the NPM run def command to see what we get. Now you'll get to see a preview at localhost 3000. So let's open this up in a browser and you should get something like this. Pretty simple. All right, so let's go over the rest of the files. We have your typical readme as well as the package.json. You can see the different commands that you can use here. We have this git ignore, which just ignores files if you're using git. And then we have a pages folder that's in a source folder. Inside that we have an index.astro. This is the page that you're seeing right now. It looks pretty much like a extremely simple HTML page. There's also a public folder, and this is where you would put any files that would automatically upload to the server when you publish this project. If you're familiar with HTML, you may be wondering about this section up here. This is called a front matter section in Astro. And this is where you can add data and or variables that you can use in your templates. I'm going to go over to my favorite simple style framework called Pico CSS. And I'll click on this Get Started button and scroll down to just get a link to the CDN. And I'll go back into my project and go ahead and just put this in the head section. So this is going to give my page very basic styles. If I want to, I can add a container here. And I'll just put this content in here for now. Let's take a look at how you can create a layout out of this basic structure. So what I'm going to do is create a folder called layouts. You need to be really careful because this needs to be in the source folder, not inside the pages subfolder. So we'll make a new folder right here. We'll call this layouts. And in here, we want to create a new page. We'll call this main.astro. This page is going to use the front matter. And then we'll take all this content from this other page and we'll just paste it in here. Wherever we want the content to load, we'll switch that to a slot tag. And let's go ahead and save this. Now we'll go back into index.astro and I'm going to delete everything except for the content. And I'm going to use an import statement here to import that layout. Now I'm going to give this thing a name called layout. In order to use this component, I need to use the layout tag. I'll paste what I want to go into the slot right there in the middle. Let's take a look at how we can pass a variable into the front matter. So I'm going to create a variable here called headline. And then I'll just use the curly braces to add this variable into my layout. We can also pass variables down into our layouts. So let's go ahead and create a, another variable here. And then we'll pass this down as a prop. Now we can go into our layout and we'll use the front matter to receive this as a variable. We'll use JavaScript's destructuring syntax and we'll receive this from the props. Now we can use that for our title. And now you can see the title has been passed through the props. Let's take a look at how we can bring in markdown pages. First, I'm going to clean my interface up a little bit. 
I'm gonna bring in a couple of folders. First, I'm gonna bring in a set of images and I'll put that in the public folder. And then I'm also gonna bring in a set of markdown files. So that is going to go in the pages folder. And in the cast folder, you'll see that there's a bunch of different markdown documents. If we take a look at this one, you can see that it's just a simple markdown file. There is a paragraph with some content, an image here, and then a complex table written in GitHub flavored markdown. So now once you've added that onto your document, you can see that if we add the cast slash name of this file without the markdown, it's gonna show us the contents of that page. Markdown files are similar, but a little bit different than Astro files. We can still add some front matter. And with this, we can bring in a layout by including a layout tag. And we can also bring in variables from the front matter. So I'm gonna take this paragraph right here and add it as a front matter variable. I'll call it bio and I'll paste it in here. And if I want to add it back to the paragraph, I can use the special front matter and then use the name of the variable to bring that back into the page. Using the front matter variable doesn't always work perfectly. Let's say for example, that I want to add a name variable as well as a slug, which is usually a shortened version, sort of a more file compatible version of the name. But if I try to use the front matter variable here in this image call, you'll see that it doesn't quite work. Now, there's a couple of ways that I can solve that. One way is to create a layout and pass these variables to that layout. So let's go ahead and create a copy of this main.astro layout. We'll call it cast.astro. The way that variables get passed into Markdown components is a little bit different. So we're gonna import them into a variable called content. And then the title can use that content.name variable. And here I'm gonna say, since this is a sub page, stargazers cast, and I'll put a couple of dashes on the name. And then I can still have my slot here, but I'll do an H1 as well with this variable. And now I can add my image tag right here. For the source, I'm going to use an EX6 template syntax, because basically an Astro page is really just JavaScript templates. So now that we have that, we can go back into this file and we'll change the name of the template that we're using. Now you can see that the image is working fine right here. We can get rid of this other one. What if you wanna bring that image in a little bit later into your layout? For that, we can use a separate component. So to create a component in the source folder, I'm going to create a new folder. I'll call it components. And in there, I'm going to create a new file called img.astro. Now a component is going to receive some variables from wherever it's called. So I'll create a const, and this is going to bring in a source as well as an alt value from the props. And then in here, I'm just gonna use the image tag. My source is going to use the source attribute in an ESX template format, and my alt will use the alt variable. Now I'll need to bring this into my markdown file. To do that, I can use a special front matter property called setup. And this gets a pipe character right here. And then in here, I can issue some JavaScript. I do need to make sure that I back up two levels here. And now I can use my image component wherever I want. I'll pass along the source attribute. And in this case, we'll use the front matter slug, as well as the name for the alt tag. And it looks like I forgot that this is an SVG file. You can see the second image come up right here. And I can take that out of here. This is a little bit more flexible since I can put this wherever I want to now. Let's take a look at one of the special features of Astro Components. We can create a component that looks through the markdown files. So I'll make a new file right here. I'm gonna call it cast list.astro. And in the front matter, I'll go ahead and import the image component. And I'm going to create a variable here. And this variable is gonna use a special feature called glob. This is gonna allow you to read a folder and create a variable that contains all the files within that folder. We'll look for the files in the cast directory that end with an MD extension. Now let's go ahead and create the HTML for this component. And in here we can type in some JavaScript 
to upload each of the cast members. We'll go through each of the cast members we receive and we'll put them in a member variable and then we'll create a link in here. Now we could use the fact that our objects have a slug variable in them, but you can also get the URL for each of the pages by using a special variable called URL that gets passed along with the glob method. Let's close out the anchor tag and then I'm going to use my image component. So in here we'll use member from matter slug as well as the member front matter name. And this should be in curly braces here. Let's go import this component into our main page. We'll go back into index.astro and make sure we import this new component. And then we'll use that component right here. Now you can see all the images came in and that's great. You can also create some CSS that is scoped to each one of the components. Let's go ahead and add a class of grid. And then I'm going to add a style tag and we'll define this grid class. This will be a four column layout and we'll add a gap of one M here. Let's try clicking on each of these right here. Super. Now we could really use a button to go back into the main page. So I'm going to go into my cast layout and I'm just going to add a link here with a roll of button and href of slash to go to the home page. And now when we go to any one of these pages, you should see this back button here at the bottom. So that should take you back to the top. And let's go ahead and add a style attribute here just to make this have a width of 100%. Now our button goes all the way to the end of the layout. Although the Astro components are pretty powerful, you can also combine this with any other framework. Let's try installing Tailwind CSS. First, I need to install the library. In addition to PostCSS and Tailwind CSS, I'm also going to need to install an additional component. This component will make it easier to work with Tailwind. Once we do that, we'll need to modify the config file. We'll go ahead and import Tailwind into that as well. Now in this define config object, we'll go ahead and add it as an integration. Here we can add an array of the libraries that we want to install. Now this is supposed to be Astro.js. Now that we have that, we need to reboot the server. I've got a process running over here. Clear this out and run the npm run dev command. This is going to reset some of your styles in your project. Let's go back to the home page and we'll see that these headlines aren't quite the right size. That's because we're working with Pico as well as Tailwind CSS right now. We'll go to the cast layout and add some Tailwind CSS classes in there. Now when we go to the cast, you can see the headline has reappeared. I'm going to copy this same style and add it to my index file. Now when we hit the back button, we should see the style right here. On this headline, I'm going to add a margin bottom of four units. That's going to give me a little bit of breathing room underneath the headline. Although the Astro components are pretty capable, you may want to use another language. And this is where Astro is pretty flexible. I'll go ahead and install Svelte as well as the custom component to manage it within Astro. Let's go back into the Astro config file and we'll import it right here. And we'll add it as an integration. Oops, that's supposed to be Astro.js. And then let's run npm run dev. And that should give me access to Svelte. To test this out, we'll create a new component. This component will let me manage dark mode on this page. We'll create a variable to keep track of dark mode. And then we'll create a function that will toggle it. This will add or delete a class named toggle that is at the document level. Now let's go ahead and program the HTML for this. We'll add some classes. And we'll create an event call. Let's go ahead and add a conditional here. And I'm going to use one of my favorite icon libraries, which is Bootstrap icons. I'll type in brightness here and I'll get one of these two icons. And I'll copy this SVG code right here. I'll do an else right here. And go get the other copy of the icon. And I'll close out my conditional. Now we'll go back to index.astro and in here I need to import the new component. 
And when I use it, I want to go ahead and add a div right here and put the headline as well as my icon inside that div. When I use a third party component, I can specify how I want it to load. And so you can choose, for example, to load the component only when it is visible in the viewport. And that's what I'm going to do. There are some other types that you can do right here. You can see the icon right here. Now it's not doing anything because we need to modify our styles for the main page. And we're gonna do that in this main Astro layout. We'll add a class here of background transparent. And that's just because we have to override what Pico CSS is doing. Also in the body class, I'm going to say BG orange as the background for light mode and BG slate 900 as the background for dark mode. I need to do one more thing to get this to work and that's to make sure that I have a Tailwind config file. Now the reason for that is I have a Svelte component and by default Tailwind doesn't know to look in any Svelte components so I'm gonna to go to the Tailwind CSS site, go to the documentation and under installation, you'll see that there's a section here with some code. Let's go ahead and copy that. We'll make a new file. We'll paste that in there and then we'll add some more, including Svelte. And also make sure that I have dark mode turned on in the config. Setting this to class will let me overwrite the defaults of the operating system. Right, we can clean this up a little bit. I'll take away the size of the SVGs and also just convert this from a button to a regular div. Now I can use this well component.